Hi, this is Learning Buffalo in Go. Today we're going to talk about models. That's the M part of MVC, which is Model View Controller. Normally when we talk about a web application, we think about the V, the page templates that we see, or the C, the controllers, the routes. Um, it's helpful to keep in mind that Buffalo was really inspired by Ruby on Rails, which is also an MVC framework. It's very common in systems like Ruby on Rails to do TDD, or test-driven development. So the tools that Buffalo provides helps us to do that. We can write tests first, and then write the code that satisfies those tests for our models. So let's take a look at how that works. So let's just review some setup here. I have Buffalo version 16.26, Go version.16. We can type Buffalo new and the name of a project. Um, in this case, let's take a look at the help text to just review um, some options that we can provide. Uh, one of the important ones that we need to worry about today is DB type. That's the type of database that we're using. The default is Postgres. Uh, I don't have Postgres on my machine. If you do, that's fine. Or you can pass an override. I'm going to use MariaDB because that's what I have working on my machine right now. I want to emphasize again that Buffalo isn't one thing. Uh, we're using the CLI right now to generate some code, but Buffalo also provides us uh, packages that can run tests for us, uh, create a dev server, and create a production build. Today we're going to be looking at the test suite that is available. So if we look at the code that's generated, uh, a couple steps we can go through just to get the project up and running. Go mod tidy just to satisfy the dependencies. Uh, we have an env file. We may need to set a different port. And the last thing is to set up some database connections, credentials. So we have this database.yaml file in the root that uses the project name to generate some credentials. Uh, we can just override these with whatever we have set up on our database. So I've created a Buffalo user, password is password. Uh, these database names are taken from the project name, but I was using something different. So we have three databases here, here, development, test, and production. Development is the one that will be used when we run the dev server. Test isn't a different environment. It's the database that's used when we run the Buffalo test suite. So I've created a Buffalo user in my database, but I haven't created the databases. Buffalo can do that for us. All these things are under the Buffalo pop namespace. So here we can see some of the options that we have. So now we've just created the databases. There's a lot of helpful documentation on the Buffalo website under the database tab. Here's a page on pop. One thing to point out is when you see documentation about Soda, if you're running this inside Buffalo, you actually do the pop namespace. There's a quick note about that here. So some more information about models, migrations, querying. And just a quick reminder that a lot of this out-of-the-box behavior is driven through the Buffalo pop plugin, which again is another tool under Buffalo. So what else can we do with pop? See some options here. The one thing we can do right away is just generate a model. Uh, we can create a model, something simple, user. There we go, generate some code. What did we get? So we can see some new files here under models and under migrations. By default, we can see that Buffalo gave us a simple struct, a user, ID, created at, updated at. Uh, Buffalo Pop is going to manage those created and updated times for us. You can remove them if we want. So this is pretty simple, but what if we wanted something more sophisticated? I'm going to delete those files and start over. So with the generate model command, we can also pass in some extra fields. What if we wanted first name, last name as well? Let's see what we get. OK, so now we have a first name and last name field. Those are strings. If we take a quick look at the migrations file, it's adding those to the migrations as well. So we have a migration file, up and down. We have a user struck with some other methods we'll look at in a minute. We also have a test file. So Buffalo's generated all this code for us. Okay, going back just one more time. 
what if we wanted a field that wasn't a string? Well, we can give it the field a name and pass a different value here to tell Buffalo to create that field, but using the int for integer. Okay, we go back and now see what we have for user. Okay, so we have first name string, last name string, age is an int. And the database column will be integer here as well. Awesome. So the next thing to do would be to run our migration. Uh, Buffalo created the database for us, but we still have no tables. We can see that here. To do that, we can simply do migrate up. So now if we see, check our database, we do have a user's table. The other thing we've give, we're given is the schema file. The schema file is going to be important when we run our tests. Let's try that now. Remember the Buffalo CLI gives us a number of commands, Buffalo test. Okay, we have some sort of error here. We can run test on just specific packages. So we see we have a missing requirement. Okay, so we ran a couple of commands there. We were missing a, re a dependency. We ran go mod tidy to satisfy that. Now when we run test on the models package, we do see an error. Where does that come from? Okay, so the CLI generated this default test, which is doomed to fail all the time. We remove that, resave, run our test, and the tests just return normally. There's nothing to pass, nothing to fail. We have no tests yet. What could we test? Now remember, Buffalo is based on Ruby on Rails and other frameworks that use the test-driven development system often. Uh, so you write the test first, and then we write the code to satisfy it. Okay, so what sort of test could we write for our user? What if we had a method that returned the full name of the user? So we can write the skeleton of the method that just returns nothing. And now we need to write the test that would be satisfied that method. And we expect it to fail the first time around. Okay, so we have to create a user and then run the test that would, would check the values. In Buffalo, this model suite struct is going to be a big helper for us. Where is that defined? So that's over here. One thing I see right away on my setup is that model suite is often generated a couple steps behind. If we go over here to the suite package under Go Buffalo, we can see it's already on version 3. So we probably want that to match. Go mod tidy one more time. Okay, now we're running the latest version of the Buffalo testing suite. Okay, let's run our test and see if this will pass. Okay, it fails, right? That's what we would expect in test-driven development. So now we need to write the code to satisfy it. So in this case, we just need to do something simple, like put those two fields together with a space in the middle and return it. Now our tests pass. Okay, that's really simple. We're not really using the database at this point. So the next step would be to try to create a user in the database. Again, we're going to look at this model suite struct to figure out how to get access to the database. So if we hover over this, we can see that ms.db is actually a pointer to our database connection. So we're going to use that to try to save this user. So we can start here just to see if we can save this to the database without getting an error. Run our test and looks like everything worked. Okay, so now a real test. So one thing we're not doing when we create our user is giving it an ID. If we take a quick look at our user, we can see that we have an ID field, Buffalo generated that, and it's using the UUID. Uh, when we look at the migration, we can also confirm that it's setting that data as a UUID type. What if you don't want to use UUIDs? You can do that as well. Change your model and modify your migration here to use int. 
one more step we're going to have to do. We're going to have to add an auto increment in order to use ints. Now whether you use IDs or UUIDs, it's up to you. The Buffalo CLI assumes you want to use UUIDs. So we'll do that. So back to our test. When we create our user, we don't give it an ID. Buffalo Pop is going to do that for us, assuming that we can save it successfully to the database. So our test here would check that ID is not nil. OK, that works after we've saved it to the database. Excellent. So what's something else we might want with this user? One requirement may be that the first name and last name aren't empty as well. In order to enforce that, we could add that rule to the database. We can also ask Buffalo to validate those fields before it tries to save to the database. How does that work? If we look at our user file, what do we have? We have our struct, we have the method we've added, we've got some other boilerplate code. The ones to look at specifically are the ones at the bottom, validate, validate create, and validate update. We can see those take a parameter as the database connection. So right now we have no validations. Let's add one. So in Buffalo, this is what a validation might look like. We're returning a set of validators that will process the fields. If Go complains or your code editor shows you some problems, make sure you're on the current version of the Buffalo packages. I just needed to update mine to the v3 of the validators to match. So now we have some validations in place. What happens if we run our tests? And our tests are still passing. If we look closely, we might have expected our tests to fail because age is now a required field. We aren't passing age here with this in this case here. The reason that the tests don't fail is that we're just running DB create. That doesn't use the validators. That's an option if you want to use it. The Buffalo Pop connection also has a validate and create function as well as a validate and update. We see it's returning validation errors, a simple error, so we're going to need to fix this. It's pretty common to see validation errors referred to like this. So if everything passes, the validation errors would be empty. In this case, we would expect at least one error in the age field. So if we stop for a moment, we realize that we're not doing test-driven development at this point. We wrote the code to satisfy the requirement, and then we wrote the test. It's passing. Is that right? How do we verify? We can go back and remove the validation on the age field. So we should be able to create a user without an age. But our test is still expecting that this would return an error. Let's run our test now to see what happens. OK, so we do get the error. What does it say? User cannot be created without the age field. OK, and that is what we would expect. So now if we add the code back, we run the test, we would expect it to pass. OK, so this is just a simple setup of how to begin running some tests with our models. There's a lot more to unpack here if we look at the Buffalo test suite and the Buffalo validate package. That's where we can see a lot of the other options that we would have for running tests and the type of validations that we would want on our data. Next time, we'll look at more sophisticated ways of modeling data with child entities and starting to hook this up with our controllers. Thanks.